Right now we have kind of the rock stars of of this panel, for sure. Um, and I would like to just introduce Joe Gabriel, who's going to be our mediator for the day. My name is Grace. I'm your track chair, but I am going to pass it over to Joe, who is going to take over. He's from Niantic, and we're very pleased to have him and the other speakers as well. Thank you, Grace. Very nice. Come on up, guys. We're going to be figuring out how to get cozy with this space. I want to make sure you guys are able to see everybody. So we shifted the chairs just a little bit. There we go. Okay. There we go. Lovely, lovely, yeah. lovely. Ah, we fit. Um, okay, cool. Right. And I have the His advanced right. back one. Great. Yeah. Welcome to Pets, Monsters, Wizards. Oh, my. Woo. Uh, interactive air use cases in Eighth Wall and Lightship. Uh, I guess a couple of thanks are in order. One, Adam, thanks for like helping put this together, man. You put the invite out to just like, hey, let's talk about a lot of things, have some fun. Um, also, the, the showrunners with AWE have j just done such a nice job making it a comfortable venue. Uh, temperature control, well done, guys. Yeah, Audi audio and video guys in the back, thanks for everything. Um, and also just like attendees, there's a million things you could be doing today, other meetings I'm sure that were interesting. <laughs> Just thanks for sitting with us and hanging for a few. And also, I mean, uh, most likely some of you came from larger teams uh, with team members that are right now kind of actively working on your product, what you're building and working on. Um, and just like thanks to those people who are making it. I don't know. It's a huge privilege for us to be here today and just like not be at my desk, you know, or not on a Zoom call. Uh, so thanks to those guys who are not here with us right now. All right, we're going to dive in. Okay. okay. Joe, can we get, Intro, can we get yeah? a picture with the audience? Like, we need to get a picture of everybody. You got the long arms, yeah, man, so, so let's do okay. this thing, yeah. Wait, oh, I can get a picture of us and the audience. If we go like this, turn around. Okay, everyone, one, two, three, AWE! Woo! AWE! Thanks. <laughs> okay, great. We will uh, direct message that to all of you. All uh, of you. Leave your numbers. <laughs> that's on you, Adam. Yeah, we yep. got this one. All right, so we're going to do some quick intros. Okay, I'm not reading my own intro. I can read your intro. Can I read it? You, oh, okay, go for it. Joe Gabriel. Joe believes in the transformative power of games, spatial experiences, and immersive content. Working with The Void, Magic Leap, Tilt 5, and now Niantic, Joe has deep experience in developer relations, dev marketing, AR VR business development, organizing dev events and initiatives, enterprise and commercial AR VR production, VR esports, and VR for nonprofits. Joe loves helping devs succeed <laughs> coming summer 2024 yeah joke, joke, joke. um okay so just real quick yeah I, i've been really fortunate just with a diverse kind of uh, experience in the xr space um location-based vr was kind of where i first got to cut my teeth in that hey this is my game guys right here this is something i'm really proud of this is Fairly certain doom. It's still on Steam. Um, these are quick uh, screenshots of the of the reviews. It's probably worth the two dollars. Uh, I was really proud of that one. <laughs> um, okay, and then just I love spending time with devs uh, at Magic Leap. That was kind of our bread and butter. It was really like coming out to dev events, doing workshops, and I've just like loved it ever since. Uh, spent some time with Tilt Five, doing DevRel with them. A couple devs in here that I got to meet. DB Creations right here for the first time. Also Petricor connected, you know, back during these Tilt Five days. Thanks for coming out, guys. Also the bottom right one, just a quick shout out. The Tilt Five Christmas album. Um, out of all the dev work I did, I was proud of that stuff, but I was really proud of this social post on Tilt Five Christmas album right there. Okay, and then now, yeah, with Lightship and uh, Definitely fortunate to be working with just so many talented developers around the world, using Lightship and 8th Wall for immersive and really interesting kind of AR use cases. And so we'll be diving into that today. And um, last but not least, uh, Adam and I have something cool in common. Uh, also, both from Modesto. Always got to give a shout out, you know, for Modesto. Modesto California. Motown, baby. Yeah. <laughs> us and uh, George Lucas had that in common. And none of us live in Modesto anymore. <laughs> cool. All right. And uh, finally, uh, just like outside of work, you know, what am I doing for fun? I am doing my best uh, to work, actually, uh, while uh, the new Tears of the Kingdom game is out. I'm having way too much fun. I fancy myself an engineer, you know, every day is how it feels. Um, while hanging out with my brood of uh, children in uh, Seattle, Washington, um, and painting minis and playing D&D, &D, you know, it takes up quite a bit of time. Nice. All right, so now passing over to you guys. So Adam, okay. I'm going to read yours now, but it won't be in as near a majestic voice, and then uh, we'll be doing this intro. So storyteller, technologist, entrepreneur, 
expertise in multiple mediums, Adam is founder and head of studio at Future House Studios. Future House is an award-winning animation game dev and visual effects company. The studio has assembled a team of artists and engineers from the top film, game, and VR studios that include Industrial Light and Magic, Weta, Disney, Epic Games, Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Niantic, Digital Domain, and more. I just added that in there. Just to, yep. That's good. Idea. Good. All right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should hire somebody from Niantic. But the studio <laughs> was awarded the best in. Oh, there it is. Okay, best in sharing award by Niantic for, sure. for our augmented reality work on the Niantic platform. Give it up for Adam. All right, Adam, did you want to do some show and tell real quick? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I, I got this mic here. So um, this is, uh, this is uh, one example of eighth wall uh, activation we did for uh, an event at Art, Art Basel, which involved Nickelodeon, uh, Star Trek, and Ninja Turtles. One of my favorites was the Ninja Turtle face mask, which maybe, can you, can you go back and then play it again? And we'll probably play again. Is Hold it? on, let me try. Okay, or skip to the next slide. There we go. Okay, there we go, you see it. Okay, so um, that was really fun. Dakota right there is on the right. He's actually in the audience. He developed that one, and uh, that's his face, is Donatello right there. So that was a really fun one. So we do a lot of stuff on Lightship uh, and Eighth Wall and love doing AR things. So next slide. Hold on, can oh. we pause there real quick? And I'm, yeah. I'm gonna introduce these guys, but we're gonna be going through all the fun projects. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. okay. I don't okay. wanna give it all yes, let's away do that. real quick. That's a better okay. way, all yes, right. I like it. Don't scan that yet. Don't talk about that yet. Don't look don't at that. Don't announce that. All right, Jason. Jason Steinberg. Hey, man. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks I, for I didn't here, want man. to, but no, we, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. We convinced him. We paid him to be here. He's, He's a, a spot. Thank Pretty you. Pretty big monster. Uh, Pretty big monster is a digital marketing agency. Where are you guys all located? Los Angeles. In LA. Very nice. Focus on AR, VR, XR, and immersive digital marketing. As an integrated marketer and general manager with over 20 years of experience spanning startups, content production, agencies, technology, financial, and entertainment companies. Jason's proud to have participated in the development and launch of some of the most popular entertainment and marketing destinations on the internet, including Australia.com, Harry Potter Online, Batman.com, Scooby-Doo Online. Really? Yeah. That was yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the launch of iconic online <laughs> gaming stories. experiences, including The Sims Online and EA. So you're like responsible for my childhood is what you're telling yes. me, right? Yes, I've gotten yeah. to do work on a lot of fun things, and not all of those things were made with love, but I do love them all in <laughs> okay. one way or another. Um, it's, it's been fun. Very good, man. Um, and real quick, just give a sneak peek here. We'll get to talk more about this, but go ahead. Just one of your recent projects. Oh, this is actually live right now. It's in support of the movie that's coming out on the 9th, which is coming up. You should go Ooh. see it. It's great, and it's cool. This is one of the more complex AR uh, animations that we've ever had to serve online. It's been, and it turned out really great. It's a global thing, but I'll stop right Still there. Still first assemble. Yeah. So. Okay, we're going to skip forward to Laney's slides real quick. All right, Lainey, let's do this. All right, quick intro. Do this, Trigger. Hold on, real quick. What's your sign? You know I'm a Virgo. Libra. Libra? Cool. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. Trigger is an award-winning XR agency that creates experiences <laughs> connecting people and brands. I'll be asking you more personal okay. questions during yeah. this interview. Yep. Um, sports, entertainment, and e-commerce. From major marketing campaigns to powerful enterprise solutions, Trigger blends physical and digital worlds in innovative yet measurable ways with clients such as Disney, Nike, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Honda, Verizon, and Walmart. Laney's decades of experience in technology and storytelling and is passionate about XR as a way to elevate and transform our world. She's a vocal advocate for women in technology, serving as a mentor, speaker, and coach in multiple organizations. Cool. Okay, and you prepared some really juicy stuff for us today too. Thank All right. You know. Can you tell us about Wonders of Xandar? I just saw the the new movie like last week. Um, and what did you think? I loved it. It was in the feels. You know, no spoils for anybody. Spoilers. Uh, but yeah, I really loved it. It was a great send off for the for the trilogy. So the Wonders of Xandar is something that we created for um, in 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 conference experience. I can't even remember the name of the conference. That's terrible. For uh, for Disney. Um, and it was a vending machine that had um, snacks from one of the planets. Uh, and was it D23, the conference for Disney? N What's that? New York Comic Con. That was it. Whoa. New York okay. Comic Con. Yeah. yeah. So you had this vending machine with these snacks from outer space, and you'd scan the code. Um, and then it would open this portal, and you'd go into these 360 videos where you get to learn about Xandar as yeah. if you were a tourist there. Okay. So it's pretty fun. And they, we actually just, I think it's still live because they just re-released it um, for the movie coming out. Okay. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. And this is free to download or check out now? Oh, yeah, not download. Sorry. Yeah, this is a web uh, WebXR yeah, experience. Thank you. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for the intros. And before we dive into the thick, thick of our work, um, kind of what I'd love is, okay, what are you doing outside of work for fun? 
you know, what is your source of, your well of inspiration where you're drawing oh. your, your muses of life? Yeah, you know? uh, mountain biking. Mountain biking? A lot of mountain biking. It's okay. really good. Um, I challenged my kids to ride 100 miles this summer. So we're, we're doing it. In a row or like, you know, no, cumulatively? No, yeah, they, they can do like two miles a day. Okay, okay. So it's fine. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Great. How's yeah. it going so far? Or uh, they, so they, they just got out of school? We're about 22 miles into it. 22 Quick miles summer. in. Yeah. Whoa, man. Yeah, yeah. kind of have to up we're the ante a little bit. Wow. Jason, how about you, man? I uh, recently bought a couple 3D printers. It's, I'd like to say that's for fun, but it's been incredibly frustrating. I have to be honest here. And, uh, but I, like you, I like the miniature stuff. I like yeah. you uh, and Gundam, unfortunately. Gundam. So. You know, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm like afraid to get into 3D printing because I know it's a money it's pit. A, <laughs> it's endless. It's that, endless. that and Warhammer, I'm like, okay, how deep down this hole am I going to go? Deep. And Lainey, what are you up to when you're not jamming on sweet uh, projects? I do sword fighting. Actually, what? I, what? yep, really? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I used to perform at Ren Fairs for like medieval fantasy, mm. and my favorite was pirate, actually. Whoa, Did a cool. couple of pirate festivals in Florida. And um, I, I kind of developed a reputation as a badass there for a while because one of my colleagues at work would be like, don't mess with Lainey, she carries a sword in her trunk. <laughs> so my big dream is to have a VR game that actually represents what real sword play feels like. Wow. So what, that would what, be what's your so what, what's amazing. What's the blade of choice? Well, my blade of choice is rapier for okay. the pirates, but I also had a claymore, I had a spear, I had a axe, I had a variety of weapons. Isn't a claymore like as big as you are? <laughs> It's like a two-handed. Yeah. I learned yeah. that from Breath of the yeah, Wild. Yeah, yeah, totally. Broadsword as well. Yep. Yeah. The Breath Claymore the was not my jam. Um, I'm here to tell you, flails, don't try this at home. Like, whoo, it's a good way to You did not know you were learning about flails, claymores, <laughs> mountain biking, and 3D printing today. But, um, you know, okay, just taking a quick step back. Guys, like, we are so, everyone here in this room, something brought you into AR, something brought you into this room, and, like, we're all humans at the end of the day and people trying to make amazing things. And like, I want to recognize your technical talent, but also you as just like, we were kicked in the, in, in the throat, you know, by COVID for a couple of years and we weren't able to connect with family, friends, community. This gathering wasn't able to happen. And like, uh, all of those things kind of uh, encompass who you are as a creative person. And like, uh, that's what we're going to be diving into today. Um, you have everything to bring to the space and I'm excited to just, um, discuss that in more detail. All right, so now, um, what I wanna do real quick is kind of an audience participation, is um, the topic here is kind of around brands, around AR, successes, challenges there. But I'd love just like three or four volunteers, like is there something specific you'd really hope to get out of today that can like help your immediate business objectives, you know, or things that you're trying to get close to? And just like raise your hand if there's any thoughts on this. I can give a quick minute to think on that. Shoot. How do you actually like reach out to brands? Like, you're calling them? Like, are you reaching out to a network you build over the last 20 years? Like, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely have time to kind of talk. I think through some practical things of just like, what does networking connection look like? If you, if you have an existing network, that's great. What if you don't? How do you kind of build that up from the ground, ground up, right? Thank you. Yeah, any others right here in the front? What's the most foolproof? Tell me more. Do you mean like optimization or Android, iOS? What do you mean? Experience of your users. There's a lot of things that I've tried on mobile that just don't work. Um, and uh, so what, what works? Okay. Yeah. I think we'll talk about design, kind of optimization considerations, things oh, yeah. that you've seen, challenges in your own playtesting. Mm -hmm. We yep. can cover that. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Right here, man. How important is sound, voice, uh, and music in spatial experience? Did you plant these guys? I did. Thanks for that one, man. I'll see you after. Yeah. There were a couple more. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. One more for everybody in the back. Yeah. Just how do you find talent, whether it's uh, contractors or people who are internally, and uh, how do you compete with you know the metas of the world? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think there was someone in the mid or in the back on this side. Anyone else? Okay, if there are, we'll have a little bit of q and I think lined up at the end and we can just cover anything else uh, as it comes up. Thank you, that's important. Um, okay, so over this last year, we've seen just a, an incredible combination of technologies, opportunities across Web3, games, VR, AR, most recently uh, with AI. You know, what's something that's surprised you, and I'd like each of you kind of respond to this, that surprised you from this last year from any of your projects? And if there are ones that we have slides for, then it's a mm -hmm. good time we can talk about that too. Uh, and I'll start with Lainey. Okay. Um, 
You know, what surprised me is that we're actually doing a lot more products than we are, well, not more than campaigns, but as an agency, you know, campaigns are bread and butter, and they still will be. We will still do fantastic experiences there, but we have a lot more companies coming to us for um, R&D, for proof of concepts, for apps, for games, for things that live beyond a three-week campaign cycle. And so that has forced us to look at things like um, support models post-launch and commercialization and analytics and um, sort of ongoing marketing support. Um, but the thing that really excites me about it is the fact that with companies coming to us for this and looking at this, that means they're seeing XR as a platform and not as a novelty mm -hmm. anymore. And, and I mean, I just, I love that trend. That's cool. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. And that was a surprise kind of coming into the space with that, mm -hmm. that way too. Did you see that, like before you were working in AR, did you see those same behaviors existing across other mediums or was that particular for well, AR? Well, before my, the previous company I worked with in AR, we were doing a lot more enterprise work and healthcare mm -hmm. um, in particular and industry and warehousing yeah. and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas moving to a brand agency, um, that, that it did surprise me. So maybe it doesn't surprise anyone else at my company, That's but cool. <laughs> it yeah, surprised yeah. me. Yeah, those are important. <laughs> So. Um, jumping over to Adam. I think she's surprising this last year. Okay, uh -huh. I think it surprised all of us, but AI just like bursting out of nowhere. Um, and so how that applies to, to AR, um, we actually were just part of uh, building the wool campaign that uh, has been showing off with Niantic. On Down in the Niantic Lounge. If you haven't been yet, we have a cool demo. And that's what he's referring to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's the owl, and the owl is. Um, AI, so it's like working to uh, you know respond to different things, and, and it's basically we're seeing suddenly this merging of technologies, which is really cool. Like this is this thing is thrown out of left field because you know a year ago nobody was talking about that, right? Mm -hmm. And suddenly we're all using it, and it's very very compelling. Um, and so that's exciting to see, like as we've combined real world uh, things in the real world through AR. But then things that can also think like they're in the real world, real world that's, that's pretty exciting and I want to see where it goes. Thanks, man. Um, from, and I'm just going to get a little specific really quick. Y'all did a, we, we showed a little bit from TMNT, Ninja Turtles. Yep. What were some surprises around that production that you guys uh, might have experienced? So, okay, okay, surprises yeah. around that production. And I'm going to go uh, back for reference material. Yeah, yeah, quick. sure. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Surprise around that production is... Uh, there's an interesting, you know, our team is really into design, right? We're really into, like, representing characters. Like, we had a lot of Turtle fans, which was really great. Um, maybe if you go to the next one. Next one? Okay. Yeah, go to this one. Uh, so there was, there was something really interesting about getting the mask right because there was a question about, like, okay, do we actually represent the green nose? Do we represent the cheeks? Like, how much of the turtle is there? And how much of the turtle do you want to be? And if you remove... Um, all of that, or if you leave that in, like you can't see yourself, mm. right? And one of the big things about AR that's really important for all of us is that we see ourselves as part of that. Mm -hmm. We're no longer watching something on a flat screen that's 20 you know, feet away in a movie theater or even on a small screen, but it's something that we see ourselves in it. And so that was, there's design choices that you have to make along the way to figure out, okay, how can this feel TMNT, but also feel you? And um, so this is really great. And of course, you know, uh, Nickelodeon Paramount had a lot of a lot of um, opinions and ideas about that, and so they understand their brand really well, and uh, that's what made it fun to work with them on this. Until suddenly you get this, you know, and so it feels turtles, but yeah. it also feels you. Thanks, man. That's cool. Uh, we'll get to talk more about that also. Jason, I'm super curious, man. What are some surprises you've ex experienced? The amount of boring projects we started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and like, Anybody this, else? this, yeah. this uh -huh. like, speaks to like the, the vibrancy of the industry right mm -hmm. now. Uh, you know, uh, our clientele are largely entertainment companies, studios, streamers, things like that. Yeah. And it's very easy to get consumers to want to interact with the content that they have. It's, it's not hard. Yeah. But now we're starting to, and they're also innovators. They were always the first to try, and they, they need to make spectacles to get people to pay attention to their stuff. They have to build brands in 90 days, essentially. Right. And so now, we're starting to get folks in like human resources software developers mm -hmm. who are interested in giving their employees at their conferences a tool that they can express themselves using the company's branding so they can be like, yay, my company. Yeah. And that's 
a big departure from what we're used to. They have more money, they have longer lead times, they're much nicer, Very different, you know, all these yeah. things. It's like, um, it's, and so I've been really embracing the boringness all of a sudden. Embrace the boring. Embrace all right, it. guys, highlight that yes. one, yeah. So uh, we fully recognize right. that y'all will leave this room with like, you know, two, maybe three key facts or things that you're going to take away with you. I think that's one of them. Right and, and, and that's yeah. the thing. It's like, it's no, it's no longer just these cutting edge companies doing this. It's the bread and butter stuff mm -hmm. that all marketers and, you know, have, have, yeah. to, have to participate in. And it shows them that the industry Maturity. is maturing. Yeah, exactly. Because, right, because before it's just like flashy stuff, like, oh, you see this cool character, you know, like Super Pets or like, yeah. yes, you know, stuff that different, a, a movie activation. It's like, oh, that's fun. Anything mm -hmm. can work for that. But then we're not we're not at that bleeding edge anymore of people yeah. trying to do something different. It's now part of marketing plans, and part of out of, out of employee of, communication. Yeah, plans. and out of curiosity, like uh, any studio members here, where you feel like you're kind of in that same boat, where you have like a sexy piece of a, a project that you're working on that you're like really passionate about, but you got other projects that are like paying the bills. Anybody? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm all for. <laughs> that's okay. The bills. And that, that's great, it. right? Those <laughs> are important. <laughs> Keeping those lights on it yeah. is essential for so all I of that. I do just want to add one Please thing do. though: is um, just because it's not on fire doesn't mean it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, it, 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 well, you should see some of these uh, production <laughs> shenanigans that happen behind the scenes on totally, the, the higher profile I get projects. It, I get it. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna switch uh, channels real quick over to kind of like challenges. We just talked through a couple successes. We're gonna look at challenges as well, and if you want to throw in successes in the same kind of framework, that, that's just fine. So, I mean, mistakes make the best lessons, and I don't really believe in mistakes, more like fortuitous learnings, you know, and uh, figuring out what doesn't work is an important part of that creative process. What are some AR lessons you learned, and how has that impacted your approach? Um, Jason, I'm really curious about this with regards to like transformers. That sounds like a really challenging project. It was really, there was a lot of challenges. First, yeah. the first challenge we had to deal with was managing uh, expectations from our client. They are a movie studio. These Transformers are truly amazing and the visual effects that go into them, that transformation is incredible. And they want it to look exactly like that served over Wi-Fi on your phone, you know, coming through in a, a few megabytes. And, and it's just not, it's not possible. So the first thing we had to do is uh, sort of manage their expectations. And consumers then also, but then how do we do that? And, you know, get it so it's um yeah. everybody's like thrilled with it and so there's a lot of like little magic tricks that we have to do with all these things um whether that's um every transformer is actually two 3d models there's the vehicle and there's the humanoid form and to get you know so serving up one model uh in, yeah, yep in, i know i know what you mean that was exactly, me that was yeah. really good yeah. Yeah. anybody yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, My child, like i said and yeah. so we do a lot of we do uh -huh. a lot of tricks like i feel like we're a magician sometimes yeah. we're obfuscating we're distracting the user we're, we're swapping things out yeah. and so what you do if you uh if you ever do this experience you'll see that uh it transforms between or it doesn't transform actually it fades between two models seamlessly where we're turning the car off and the humanoid on or the humanoid off the car on. Yeah. So little tricks like that that really do feel like we're magicians here. We're like, look over here while I do something over here. And uh, that's, the, that's the tricks you learn as you go through and try and figure these things out. Thanks, well, there's a yeah. high expectation there because the film studios are coming to you with like hundreds of thousands or millions of polygons for this well, robot and then suddenly you have to make it work in AR. Yeah, the, you know this because we've handed you these types yeah. of models before. And so like when we get a model from a studio, it's typically you know somewhere between 70 million polygons, like you said, and we have to get it down to somewhere around 70,000. And so that's like 1% of the original thing, yet we have to retain the look of it, we have to retain the, you know, it's got, it, these things are metal, they got to reflect properly, and uh, man, there is just an expertise in just <laughs> And we want this all on web AR, please, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, we, and it's got to load fast, and if it doesn't load fast, then they lose viewers. Um, it's, it's just a whole bunch of challenges, and it turns into this, yeah, yeah. We're, we're keeping the space place spinning while we're producing these things, because oftentimes we're beginning these projects before the models are fully done, and so that's always a trick, and so then we're, we're like, and here's our... Our work, and they're like, it's, we've changed that. And so, so quick follow-up uh, in connection with your question is kind of like, how did optimization or testing, you know, where did you have to cut off support for specific types of phones? Like, what did that look like to just make a stable experience that also kind of met the expectations or, you know, quality threshold that you're trying to hit? We work with a lot of old school video game people at this point. So we don't want the people in uh, the developers or the, the 3D artists who are working with the today's cutting edge video games. We want the guys who are having trouble finding work in today's video game environment because those tricks that they learned, you know, 15 years ago to get things through a, a pretty small pipe compared to what we're doing right now. Those are the tricks we want. So I feel like we've reinvigorated a lot of like old 3D animators' Whoa, uh, cool. careers because they know how to do that and they know how to do it very credibly. And um, we're, we, we look to old video game 
tricks for figuring out how to make these things work and look in a credible way that makes people want to take these characters and yeah. pose with them and use them in their social media as a reference point for them. So, so AWE next year, you guys could give some talks on old school game tricks for yes. modern and, air and, and ultimately, yeah. we consider optimization a fetish that we just uh -huh. can't get enough of. <laughs> so it's like, it looks really good. Thank you. It looks, it looks really good. Oh, I have a video. We'll talk about this a little bit. Wait, I don't want to go. Should we play the video? Here, let's do that real quick. So this project started out as we were augmenting real life statues that were the size of, you know, 20 foot statues that were the size of a real transformer would be. And we augmented them. So we would hang all these things off of them. You can see this on the left hand side of the screen right now. It started in the South by Southwest, but this has gone all over to Tokyo, to London. It's right now in New York and Times Square. And the goal was to make those things transform. We couldn't do that in the time frame. So what we do, we now have two apps right now. If you scan the QR code on the right, you can put Optimus Prime right here on stage next to me, and he will transform, and it looks pretty good when you compare it to the statue. And then, again, once again, that's done through lighting tricks, through heavy, heavy optimization, and just all those little tricks that go into it. And every step of this, there's hard-earned lessons that went into this that only people who have been doing this for a long time really pick up. And then, so we have like apprenticeships, it almost feels like, as yeah. older developers are passing on this hard-earned knowledge to the younger folks, and it's, it's cool. Thanks. Next one. Next one's for Lainey. So, can you do a quick intro while I find the slides uh, about Rangers Wanted? Yeah. And then the follow-up question is kind of, you know, what challenges. were some of the lessons and challenges there? Yeah. Sure. So, um, Teddy Roosevelt Presidential Library, uh, which does not exist yet, they're breaking ground in September, and then uh, we'll, we'll. Is there any way to press? There's like a. No, that should be a gift. Anyway. Um, so the idea of the game is for children to learn there about, is. there we go, to learn about conservation through sort of the eyes of Teddy Roosevelt, yeah. who is big on conservation, and uh, with the goal of becoming an honorary uh, park ranger, really. So we built this on Lightship, and um, <laughs> we had a few dev challenges. I hope you won't hear James, our lead dev, sobbing over there in the corner as I recount our challenges. But uh, uh, for starters, we used uh, the game board in, mm -hmm. in Lightship. So, so we can establish a play area. It's consistent. Whether it's indoors or outdoors, we yeah. can place objects on it. Well, one of the main uh, objects of these games, there's like five mini games in here that you can see, is this rewilding effort. Yeah. So the rewilding is like helping the beaver plug the holes in the dam or helping the bee pollinate the flowers, that kind of thing. So for that, we used meshing. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, <laughs> Uh, we wanted to use occlusion to make it look better. But what happened was the occlusion and the meshing sort of started Z-fighting and then flickering, and then it was hard to see. So then we started trying to combat that with lighting, and then that wasn't working really well. So in the end, as you can see, we have a really good looking yeah. game, and it's a lot of fun. But the takeaway for us was really around um, figuring out when and where to use which solutions and how they do and don't play together. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is such a cool project. James, when does this one launch? There we go. Yep. Yeah. Playing it safe. Uh, just, just to be clear, there's not a launch date yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, they are looking at potentially launching it with the breaking ground in September. Man, that's so. cool. Um, this one was really uh, fun for me to kind of uh, see the advancements uh, as a project. And this was a really quick turnaround project. It was three months? Two, it, mo two months? It was a little longer than that. The dev yeah. time was the pretty The dev time was turnaround. really fast yeah. turnaround, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, what I loved about this one in particular, so I think anyone here has experienced that kind of dull moment of AR where you're like, hey, scan a thing, measure your play space. And it's kind of this like sterile thing that feels a little out of environment for whatever app you're doing. One of the really clever things I love about this is it makes it feel embedded as part of the experience. You have like a little pointer that is shining golden on the grass and then you're dragging it over your playable area where then flowers and plants are kind of like sprouting up and growing. So they, they, they've gamified and, and made this kind of typically boring AR slice, you know, really charming and part of the experience and all. And I, I just thought it's a small thing, but uh, well, I will say, if you, yeah. if you want to f talk about uh -huh. challenges, yeah. again, um, uh, one of the things with this is, like you said, the dev time was fairly quick, all things considered, yeah. considering the output of the project. But what we did do is spend a lot of time on, on the creative and on things like that, and on finding the fun, 
uh, knowing that we both had to engage children as well as educate children. Um, and, and also try and get them outdoors. You know, it says, it's, hey, it's more fun outdoors. Um, so spending a bit more time on things like that right. so that you don't lose the child when mm -hmm. they're scanning the ground. And mm -hmm. even if they don't know how to do it, um, that's what kids like to do. They like to uh -huh. figure it out. It's like, oh, okay, let me try this. And how about over here? And we had our creative art director, his son tried it. And a little bit above our demographic, I think he was 15 years old and we were going for a bit younger. Yeah. But when he started that scanning of the ground, he enjoyed it so much, he spent half an hour just doing that. Right. Not oh, even getting to the game. He's like, let me try it up the yeah. wall. That's, let me run down the hall. Awesome. You know, it was, awesome. it was great. Yeah. Thanks for taking time. I like mm -hmm. that little bit of... Uh, attention to detail is I think any creator in sometimes as a platform provider it's like hey here's our template project that kind of like solves this problem but usually it's kind of like a standard example that's kind of used here's a kit you know a UI kit that we put out there to make your lives easy but I think when you pay close attention to those details like users notice so thank you okay. um, and I didn't even think to ask like what's the difference between the outdoors and indoors I think an app that like respects your space uniquely it's pretty special. What it, so in outdoors, about? actually, um, you have a bit larger space that you can operate with. And so there are, say, more holes in the dam okay. or more flowers. And then there's an element of what we call the fireflies. So you, you earn badges in a number of yeah. ways here. And one of those ways is to hit the fireflies. And they're little creatures that have information related to the beaver and the dam and the environment. Okay. Um, so there are more of those floating around. So you can ultimately, you can get badges for the indoor. You can get badge, more badges for the outdoor. And then to kind of win the whole thing, you have to get all the badges. Sure, so. okay. And then ultimately, I mean, we've been talking about things with the library, like when the library is actually a physical entity you know, kids could be able to take the game in and exchange their virtual badge for a real badge at the gift shop or things like that. So I love that in real life and, and digital uh, connection as mm -hmm. well. The so. pledges there that like, mm -hmm. yeah, little rangers that exactly. raise enough. Exactly, a little ranger who could. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, that's cool. Okay, okay. Um, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. It's gonna be personal question time. It's gonna be oh. doo -doo 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 Adam, you're up first, man. Okay. Um, if no prep time, Batman versus Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider-Man with prep time. Spider-Man. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think we're good here. All right. Yeah. Um, any other you want, takes you want here? Reasons? The Witcher. The Witcher. <laughs> the Witcher. <laughs> yes. uh, okay, what kind of sword is Witcher carrying around? I don't, I don't know this answer. What is it? Uh, oh, my gosh. You know. Is that, I, a, is that a long sword, a broad sword, or yeah, what is that? He has yeah, Two the blades. big one. Yeah. yeah, the silver one, but not a rapier. No. No, it's okay. not a rapier. He's not a pirate. Not yet. Not good enough. Okay. Witcher's cool. I want to see that um, interaction. Uh, mesh those worlds. All right, Jason. That means you're up when we have our next personal question moment. Uh, be prepared. Okay. Okay. Uh, next topic, guys, is bringing characters to life um, is a huge focus of entertainment experiences and partners that you guys have. How do you capture personality? Uh, and this is a background I do not have on in like animation and uh, bringing characters to life. So I think yeah, we we actually here. had a big yeah, start out, kick it off. We, we worked together on DC League of Super Pets, which was you know bring a slide for that one. We do. I think yeah, we do. I think we do. Think we do. Yeah. yeah. But um, you know, so this is you know The Rock uh, played uh, uh, crypto, and you know how do you, how do you bring the The Rock his performance into uh, a dog, which then has to be expressed through AR, which, you know, you have limitations in terms of the number of uh, bones you have to make these guys move. And, you know, this is a very difficult challenge. And so, <laughs> what did I do? I turned to Adam, so you can, <laughs> so you can explain it. Um, so our, our team is, we, we have some great character animators on our team, and uh, Jason's right. I mean, it's, it is challenging because of the limitations. It's not like a TV rig or, or a game rig. It's, it's an AR, web AR rig. and so. Uh, you can see here, like, what we're trying to do is, it, there's also the issue of, this This slide's great right here, but you don't actually get to usually see them that close because somebody's usually holding their phone like this and they're far away. That's the natural use case, right? You hope that they get in really close, but you've got to make the actions really big. You've got to make those characters um, emote in a large way. And so, um, you know, anything you can express in the body, you want to express in the body movements uh, and then you hope what you do is you make those eye darts really prominent because eye darts you know moving around like that really brings a character to life and like the expression of you know getting 
getting big heavy brows down there. And so I, I I'm curious, like, are, are your partners sharing like existing models with you or are you making these from the ground up? What assets are partners providing for some of these? Yeah, we do get the studio models. So we uh -huh. need to start off with that, but then those have to be optimized to an incredible degree. Yeah. We and gotta decimate yeah. them, take all the polys out, like re-rig them. Do they share notes them. on behaviors, animations, or on the spirit of a character and how they should look? Uh, or is that just kind of part of the design review process? Yeah, I mean, you them? can watch the trailers, yeah. right? And you can figure that out to see what they look like mm -hmm. um, and, you know, get an idea. And it really depends on the studio. So for Warner Brothers, for example, they were they were like, you guys are good at this? Do it. And they sort of let us go. Oh, and, nice. they were, and they were yeah. very happy with okay. it. We've had we've also worked with, so for example, Sony Animation and uh, for Mitchell's versus the Machines, which was a, just a wonderful movie. And they, and they had this little derpy dog called Munchie yeah. and um, pig dog. <laughs> the pig, pig the pig dog, dog. yeah dog. exactly yeah. and uh, he they, they loved this character so much that they were just like we're going to put as a you know animation director you in touch with our animation team and we were taking notes directly oh from cool them. and they would send us annotations yeah. like you know this hair is out of place and yeah. you know we don't when his eye moves out this way we only want it to be at 60 degrees you know or stuff like that so, they oh, were, and so wow. some people yeah. really love on their characters mm. and other people are like no, no no we're doing something big and this we just have to express this in the widest possible way go love it, it. yeah so. so some groups will kind of come in uh just hey take it away we trust you guys you got it and then others have sometimes they'll have notes to share yeah and, 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 and we character. become an extension of their team in, yeah in, in those okay. situations and, and you really have to do service to the brand right because the, the, like that's why they're coming to you because they want their brand to come to life on the little screen on your phone yeah. so you've got to make it uh, as true to that brand and and expressing it um as, as best you can yeah Lainey, I'm so curious about the Avatar way of water yeah, experience we have a too. Slide on that one too. Yes, let me bring that up. Um, so with IP like Disney, um, obviously you treat it with respect, but the challenge comes then when when you're not actually dealing with the IP directly from the movie, but you have to extend that into another story. So it has to be, like you say, in the spirit of. Mm -hmm. It has to be in the aesthetic of. You know, it has to keep that same tone and, yeah. and those sorts of things. So this was actually, it was created for D23, uh -huh. um, an in-person event, although we, we also ported it, um, uh, you know, you could do it on the web as well uh, uh, on your own. But what it was is, you, oh, and, and who did we work with yeah. on this? We, little little we company to, called yeah. Future House. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, I mean, this was a huge project under a short time frame. Uh -huh. So it was super helpful to have that kind of support. Um, and what we did is we had 90 different aquatic creature body parts. Oh, uh -huh. So you have like a head, a middle, and a tail. Yeah. And we had 90 different versions of those that, again, were in the aesthetic of uh, Way of the Water, mm -hmm. right, in this Pandorian Reef. Um, and that combination, I want to say, equaled at least a thousand different unique combinations mm -hmm. that you could make. Okay. So attendees would come in and they'd be at these little computers yeah. and they'd make their, their aquatic creature. And then there's this giant screen. So mm -hmm. you were talking little screen. We yeah. had to make it for yeah. little and giant. Um, where it looked like an aquarium. Uh -huh. And so they could track their fish uh, swimming around this aquarium. Um, and, and just, well, it, we've talked about success right. and I want to talk a little bit about impact as well. I mean, uh, um, Disney told us frequently yeah. how much that, uh, uh, they just thought this was amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the best part though, in talking about the impact was, um, Disney had pledged mm -hmm. $5 per creature created to go towards the nature conservancy, and that would be to protect the oceans and the life in the oceans. And they were gonna cap it at a million dollars. So what that means, if you wanna do the quick math, is 200,000 creatures had to be created in Whoa, order to okay. reach the million. And it only took them, I wanna say, a couple of months to reach the million. They, it's yeah. actually more than that now, but it took a couple of months and they reached that million and reached that goal. So the fact that AR can have that kind of impact as well at, cool. at that kind of volume is super cool. That was great. And so I know, Adam and I are both. Yeah, we, we're, we're, yeah. And if I can say something on process a little bit, like what you're talking too, about yeah. with brands, is um, you know when we were going through that process of okay, how do we make this look like it's an avatar thing? We just said okay, let's do a bunch of drawings, and we had our concept artists go through and work with you guys to do a bunch of drawings of the heads, and then a bunch of drawings of the middles, and and then they had to be passed off from Disney of like okay, is this 
true to the avatar aesthetic. And then what's interesting is then the, the neck on this character has to meet the body of this character, of all the characters. So there's, there's the joints where the, the tail meets and the head meets, and so those all have to match up. Otherwise, you're gonna get um, you know, problems of intersections or gaps. Yeah. And so it was a fun problem to solve. It was to really me, this kind of harkens back to what Jason was saying about the old school animation, because I don't know if you all played this, but I loved this game as a kid when we were bored, is you take that piece of paper, mm -hmm. you draw the head and right. the neck, and then you <laughs> fold it over and you pass it around, and then you get you know these little monster that creatures like that, that the group yeah. has created. That is mm -hmm. exactly what this project felt yes, like. Yes, it's, it's a new version of that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if that's a, if, if that is a, a a common thing or a surprise, um, sometimes I think from the outside looking in, it's like, oh, agencies are all kind of like competing for the same work. Creative studios are all competing for the same work and projects. But in these instances, I've loved hearing about just like total collaboration, you know, like, hey, let's figure this out together as a group. We, um, we have to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, so we're, we're not the largest shop or anything like that. So we have a particular skill set. And so we need, our business model is we play well with others. We need to plug in with other people who have skill sets that are either better than ours or the ones that we right. don't have whatsoever. And so we all have to collaborate. We come together and we are in service of this brand, service of our clients, service of this experience for consumers. And that's really what we think. There's not a lot yeah. of, I haven't seen this at all, a lot of territoriality in this space, so it's, it's really nice. It still feels very collegial. We're all doing right. this thing. We're building this AR space together. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah I don't, I don't want to you know, get too lofty here, but it, it does feel like we're in it together. Whereas, you know, I've, I've also worked in media and it doesn't feel that way at all. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can I ask too, like for new or early stage, like creative studios that might be in the audience, like would you recommend like a broad portfolio to start out with to like get that going or like specialize in one particular thing? Have you found any, I guess, Direction there like that would broad be broad AR or broad outside of AR. Broad use case, yeah. I yeah. guess broad within AR or outside. But I mean, how do you view that that question? Um, so, well, for us, I can speak to what we do. Is we're we're very broad. You know, we we are an AR agency and an XR agency that does experiences for all sorts of people. You know, whether it's assisting Trigger or Pretty Big Monster or doing creative on our own and working with the brands, or you know, we go all the way to game dev. You know, we do VR games, console games. Um, we do animation and VFX, right? And so uh, for us, it's very broad. And so I think within the AR sphere, um, when you're broad, more people can find you. Uh, and then as you make those relationships, you can narrow down on the thing that you're really, really good at and that you're known for. Mm -hmm. I would say, um be specific and intentional, but don't limit yourself. So, you know, for example, um, uh, you know, we're not just AR. Yeah. We, we, we call ourselves an XR agency. XR. And right now, XR really um, spans the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's whether AR is involved or not, you know, 3D might be involved, um, but it's, what are the new platforms? Roblox, you know, Fortnite, where are the people going? Where do the brands want to right. be? How do we, and, and then we take that and we say, how do we make that connection to this, and the M word, which I hate, but nonetheless, we use it. Um, the to, monkey verse. Exactly. Very good. Okay. Um, but connect it to in real life things. You know, how do we do maybe that transaction funnel that gets people into a store or, or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so for Trigger, I mean, we say that we focus in, in four industries, which is, you know, entertainment, retail, um, sports, and enterprise. Um, does that mean we wouldn't do a healthcare project if it came up? No, but it means where we're spending our time and our focus and our sales team right. is in those areas. Okay. So that's why I say be intentional and specific because if you spread yourself all over the place, you will find yourself no place. Um, but don't limit your, yourself by saying, oh, I, do, I don't do that. I don't do yeah. Roblox or I don't do Meta, you know. It, it was easy for us. We decided what doesn't feel like work for us, and that's what we focused on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it, 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 so much of it, we started out as full service, you know, and we're like, we're going to have a full service immersive agency, whatever that means, you know. So, and uh, quickly we realized we don't like, like making the ads. We don't like making the social. We like making these experiences, whatever they might be, if it's a 360 or AR or yeah. VR. And, and that's what didn't feel like work. We enjoyed it. Even if it was difficult to do, we enjoyed the challenge, so. Thank you, yeah. Um, okay, so just look at the time. We got about 10 minutes left. We are gonna save some time for Q&A, but as like a last, um, I guess, uh, 
quick thing about your... Oh, you know what we forgot to do? is Jason's personal question time. Oh, All right. Yes. All right, so this one... I'm going to give you a choice, okay? okay. So, since I'm putting you on the spot, you can choose either an irrational fear, or it can be rational. That's fine, too. Mine <laughs> is getting hit around, like, in the teeth with a bat when walking around a corner for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's mine. It happens a lot. It's right? because you grew up in Modesto. <laughs> that's what it is. I worked in Stockton also. I think that's part of it, yeah. Um, or the second it's question like is, like, is there a sport where you're like, I'm convinced if I started that sport at the age of, like, 10, I would have been a pro, oh. you know? <laughs> well, these are hard questions for me. Okay. Because I am not very athletic at all. Uh, although, when Or I, any other practice, not necessarily sport then. Yeah. No, I don't, I'm not very talented at anything. I'm, what I'm very good at is being around talented people and helping them out. So it's like there's nothing that I feel like I really would have uh, excelled at had I started earlier. And irrational fears, I am constantly afraid. Uh, what am I afraid of? Speaking in public, I think. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought I'd put him on the spot. All right. I'm, I feel like trash. <laughs> no, I, I, I Question number three. I'm just, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So before we get into Q&As, like looking forward this next year, what are some things that you're looking forward to? And this can be projects you're working on, new technologies, new directions and things, directions you want to explore. Um, take it away, Lainey. Uh, I'm going to harken back to something Adam said about AI and, and the wall demo that you did with InWorld. And um, I, I know AI is the buzzword here, but uh, it's for a reason, and it's super fun to yeah. work with. So not only are we incorporating it in our creative production and dev processes, mm -hmm. but we're also um, pulling it into our products and in, into what we, what our offerings are. So you had mentioned the Eighth Wall Hackathon earlier. Yeah, uh -huh. So InWorld had actually um, contacted us to create an experience for that. Um, I think I have a slide that shows a still of that. But what it was was uh, Percival the Potion Seller. And so we, for some reason, we just had this idea of like a snake oil salesman to uh, really uh, push the limits mm -hmm. of this, this AI character. And uh, so what would happen is you come up and, and he quizzes you about what are your ailments and then tries to kind of drill down into what potion that he wants to sell you. But the whole purpose of this uh, was to give to the hackers at Niantic to be able to kind of rip it apart and make something that would be their own, you know, that they could do. And so that was just kind of the beginning with this sort of thing. And uh, we are in the process of, of pulling AI into another project um, that it hasn't released yet, so I can't mention the name of it. But we're really looking to where those areas where we can naturally include AI that both makes it a better experience for the consumer and makes better ROI for the, yeah. for the brand. Yeah. And, and there is a sweet spot there, I can tell you. Yeah. yeah. Time to figure it out. Now's the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, Jason, then Adam. I, I'm going to state the obvious. I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen next week with Apple. I mean, yeah. I feel like the industry and myself, we've all been holding our breath for so long. I'm just I'm waiting for the shoe to fall already. Right. And so I'm ready for that to fall. And I think that's going to have a big impact. It's either going to be a great thing or it's going to be a bad thing. And no one's really sure which. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Uh, the hype news. is unreal for sure. Right. Right. But it's I swear, if they do not update Siri to be a little bit more functional, <laughs> I'm going to lose it, man. Right? If they so, give me a piece of hardware, yes. but I can't it's, talk to my phone. Yeah. Right. It's All gotten right. worse. I don't know what it is. I just asked Siri yesterday, hey, if it's 4 p.m. in Copenhagen, what time is it in Seattle? I'm sorry. I don't know. And I'm just like, dang <laughs> it. You know, like, I just want to know. Green. Anyway. <laughs> dog Siri. Yes, right. do. So please, please. Tim Apple, let's do this thing. All right. Do it. All right. Do it. Yeah. Oh, my, me? You're up, okay. man. I'm up, yeah. I'm up. So, okay, something I'm really looking forward to this year. Um, so what's really cool is we spent the last uh, two and a half years working on Peridot with the Niantic team, doing animation, modeling, rigging, you know, all the, all the content. And that's been amazing. So we're really excited for that to release. And it's given us, like, this feeling of, like, okay, it's time for us to make our own light ship game and so we're really excited because we're going to be making and launching our own light ship game that in fact has to do with swords Ooh. um so <laughs> we are going to be doing like a fantasy rpg imagine like legend of zelda meets pokemon go um traversing the world battling monsters um and so we're going to be starting that off as a closed beta 
you scan that QR code, you can <laughs> get on our list for the closed beta, which is gonna be kind of cool. And so um, we are going to get to take all the things that we've learned, making Peridot, working with um, you know Trigger and Pretty Big Monster yeah. and all, all these different AR experiences, and let's see what we can make. And so um, that's something that we're really excited about this year to push the limits of creativity in AR and Lightship yeah. and see what we can come up with. Thank yeah. you, man, for sharing. And I just like, I'm, uh, your, your team just brings me so much uh, like courage. I just want to tell you that. Oh, that like, I, I say that because I know how difficult yeah. it is when you're like, so much of your time and resources is really dedicated to client work and like their projects and productions and tight timelines and whatever budgets you have. But to like literally carve out time for like, a personal project of like this kind of scale or scope, you know, that's a tough thing to do. Making anything is hard, but like sometimes making your own thing is like one of the hardest things you can do. It, it's yeah. tough because, you know, it's time and it's also money, right? And it's like, okay, we can play it safe yeah. or we can roll the dice and really go for it. And okay. so we're going to go for it. Woo! So, okay. Looking forward to that. Very good. Very good. All right. We got a, about five minutes for Q and A. Um, okay. So we're going to start with the, how do I connect with brands? What's, uh, what are some practical things I can do? Just have you found anything? Is this cold calls, emails, LinkedIn? Kind of what's rapid rapid answer? Uh, Had a really yeah. good sales team, like with Courtney over here, who was on our biz dev. Uh, but it's also, it's social connections. It's uh, posting links and reposting links about announcements. Um, it's having a really good capabilities deck. Mm -hmm. um, so that when you have a client who has really enjoyed the experience of working with you, and they're like, what else can you do? Or, hey, I know somebody in a different yeah. department, you know, making those connections. Networking, uh, everything we do, whether you like it or not, networking is- Sharing is caring, deal. right? right. Yeah. yeah, the whole organization ends up selling, whether it's a developer who knows some guy or anything like that. You gotta leverage everything that you have. Uh, but social selling, selling is really where it's at for us. And when we were getting going and we didn't have a body of work to show or anything like that, we decided to make the things we wanted to make and then show them to our client, our prospective clientele and be like, this is what we do. Would you like us to do this for you? Yeah. And the answer was yes. <laughs> so it, that was really rewarding. So, you know, sort of like make the success that you want to have is sort of. Thank you. Oh, Adam, you too, man. Well, uh, maybe it's just been luck. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's always. Uh, Trigger that's always reached out yeah. to us through our website for the first contact that we made. And then we did a couple projects together and it's just been this relationship that's formed and we've probably done six or more projects together now yeah. um pretty big one i think you probably found us on our website too i think maybe so. yeah yeah and then we started talking and then and then we we talked about doing a project but it wasn't it was we, a was like romance, the budget right? <laughs> yeah yeah it was and then like a year later we ended up doing something together and so it's those things that you know um you've got to be around you got to keep making stuff i post on linkedin every day about the kind of things that we're making uh you know, sometimes I speak on podcasts about AR and uh, the type of games we're making and people find out about us. That I'll get messages all the time. Hey, I heard this podcast. Mm -hmm. Heard you on this podcast. You want to talk, you know? And uh, you also celebrate other things happening in the space in general. Like it's right. not like all you, about you. you yeah, know? you don't like, want to do you that. Also celebrate. You, yeah. you, sure. you're, you're going to talk about, hey, this company did this cool thing. Uh, or here's a friend. I, you know what I love? Actually, I love this because... Um, uh, some of the Niantic team has stopped by our office and then we'll take pictures in the, in the guess who stopped by the office today? Niantic is doing all these cool things. And you know, that's always, it fun, wasn't right? me. I haven't stopped by their office. Joe, yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Joe, you got to stop My, by the yep, office. I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's really fun. And then showing like sharing so that people understand that you're excited about the space and that you know about the space and yeah. that you want to tell people about, it goes back to what you were saying about, you know, this is like a very collaborative mm -hmm. area and that's what's fun about it. Um, and so, you know, when we're promoting AR in general, then people find out that you are into AR yeah. and they want to the talk to you. The authenticity of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so many relationships start like three years ago and all of a sudden like, I'm trying to do this thing. Remember that conversation we had three years ago? Are you still doing that? Right. You know, that, and so those things mature. But like, it's like you're planting seeds everywhere you go. Um, I know we didn't get to the question about how do I kind of find the talent that I'm looking for or compete with bigger guys that way. Can I invite you guys just to hang out for a few minutes afterwards? Yep. And then any other questions from the group, like come say hi, get connected and like, uh, please ask that question. I just want to thank you guys for taking time with me here on this panel and thank like you. jamming thank on you. the slides and just putting it all together. And again, thank you to the audience for being here and for your participation. 
asking us those questions is a big help for uh, all of that. So best wishes to you all, you know, in whatever you're working on or driving towards. If there's ways that we can help you in that process, consulting or just like a friendly chat, love to learn what you're up to. Um, but big round of applause for our participants today. Thank, thank you so you much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Joe.